Hello, welcome to the next in our series of Inside the Tanks. Um, and it's with great pleasure and due to popular demand that we're, today we're going to look at the fantastic Tiger One. Not only any old Tiger One, of course, this is Tiger 131, the only fully functioning Tiger One actually currently in existence in the world as we speak. Relatively few, of course, Tiger Ones were ever produced, only 1,354 between 1942 and 1944. We're now joined by David Willey, who is the curator of the Tank Museum here in Bovington. Thank you very much for joining us, David. A bit of history about the marvellous Tiger 131. This particular Tiger was captured in North Africa in early 1943. It was sent out at the end of those seesaw battles that had been going across the North African desert out to Tunisia when finally Hitler realises the Germans are going to lose. He then reinforces the German army there with his latest secret weapon, that's the Tiger. So a number of them are sent across the Mediterranean. This one is serving with the 504th Schwer Panzer Battalion, um, the 504th Heavy Tank Battalion. It's on a hillside at a place called Medjel Bab. British tanks are attacking it. They're Churchill tanks that are firing at it. We know it knocks out at least a couple of those Churchill tanks, but then we can see damage on this tank that we can now surmise why the German crew abandoned the tank. They didn't blow it up, they should have done. Um, that was the orders of the time. It was a secret weapon. You should destroy your tank if you're gonna abandon it. But we think that one of the key rounds that was fired by a Churchill tank it goes under the barrel, we can look at that damage in a moment, and it wedges the turret to the hull. In other words, it goes underneath the point meeting between the turret and the hull, jams in there so the crew can't actually traverse the turret. And whether they were wounded, we just don't know. We've never been able to find out or actually track down the actual crew. They abandon the tank. The German war diary actually uses the word panic um, when they leave that tank. Um, it's the first Tiger we've captured intact on the battlefield in the West. So let's have a look at the damage. Um, you can see here on the mantlet and the beginning of the barrel, the damage as a round has been coming in, it's clipped underneath, clipped the mantlet there, and actually then wedged between the turret and the hull. At the time, the gun was facing forward and it actually depressed the roof above the driver and the co-driver. And we've got photographs of the time. It shows a fair bit of damage went on there. Again, whether that wounded the crew, we just don't know. You can also see where another, we think six pound around from one of the Churchill guns that's firing, has clipped off the side of the lifting eye here and it's exposed the bare metal. Um, so another round's gone there. And around on the vehicle as well, you can also see other bits of damage, which we assume this is probably from shrapnel, so exploding high explosive rounds and there's more damage on the rear. Um, so obviously shell fires going off around the vehicle at the time as well, so we can see that sort of damage. We know that the loader's hatch, not the commander's hatch, the loader's hatch, the square hatch, was actually damaged as well. We've got photographs when it was first hit, that was broken, subsequently that was replaced. Um, so again, whether the crew were damaged in, in that, that action, again, we just don't know. But whatever happened, the crew abandoned the tank. Again, the German war diary, diary it says, they use the word in the war diary, panic. The crew of Tiger 131 panic and abandoned the tank. And the following day, the 48th Royal Tank Regiment, who have these Churchill tanks, they've been attacking up the hill, they've had losses, they are back on the battlefield and they find this tank sitting there. Um, abandoned and they go across it they have a look at it they knock out the wedged in shell we realize we've got the first captured tiger tank and it's photographed and filmed in situ before it's then recovered back it goes to Tunis where Churchill comes out he sees it in Tunis um, the king sees it it's put on show it's then taken back to Britain where it's taken to a place called Chertsey where they do all the experimental analysis. They have a really good look at it there. They take it apart, they measure it, they record it, they make a massive report on it, put it back together again, they fire the gun, they do all sorts of things and it's only till 1951, well after the war, that it's then handed over to the Tank Museum. Um, and it's been here obviously a very popular exhibit for many many years. 
And at the end of the 1990s, we started a programme to get it back into running order. And now, every now and again, we take it out, special event, special occasion, we let people know we're going to run it, and we drive it around our track.